to comment on this bizarre decision, plus what needs to change to protect us from bushfire disaster and a few other hot news items. The New South Wales Deputy Premier, John Barillaro, joins us from our CBD studio. Deputy Premier, thank you very much for your time. G'day, Chris. G'day, Richo. John, I would have thought this is rather outrageous. Um, they're obviously on this campaign of trying to eradicate the virus nationally. That was never the plan, was it? No, it was, it was never the plan and, and there is no vaccine and we all know that all we could do was stop the spread, uh, suppress uh, the infection rate and we all know that even community transmission, even in the states of New South Wales, Queensland and uh, Victoria are either marginal or, or non-existent and all the cases and most of the cases we're, we're, we're identifying in New South Wales are those that are actually caught in quarantine at the border and, and not, don't forget at the end of the day uh, Sydney Airport is where most people come back to this country and they, they may be people to return to Adelaide. So we're almost doing the cleansing for them. Yeah. I want to move away from borders. I want to move on to Victorian branch stacking, which has reached New South Wales. This secret ALP report says it's rife in Western New South Wales, but it's been around for a few months and they haven't acted upon it. Uh, there's been some rowdy scenes in New South Wales Parliament today. Yeah, look, there's no question there was a censure motion on, on the, on the uh, leader of the opposition in Jody McKay where uh, there's just been no, no noise, uh, no uh, firm leadership from Jody in relation to dealing with what has been now clearly uh, a breach of some possibly the Electoral Act uh, in branch stacking with the member for uh, Glanville. And uh, the reality here is, is that while you've got Daniel Andrews, who, who did act swiftly, firmly, re reported and referred and sacked those individuals. Mm. Uh, the opposite is happening here in New South Wales, but it's a, it's a report that's been sitting uh, in a Sussex Street drawer somewhere uh, for three months. Uh, everyone aware of it, the, the leader of the opposition aware of it, but they did nothing with it. And it, it just shows that uh, Labor didn't learn much after being thrown out of office in 2011. They seem to be the same, uh, the same party that gets caught up in scandals. Uh, and it was only a few months ago we were talking about $100,000 in cash in an Audi's bag. So... Uh, and what we're now seeing in Victoria, and that's probably spilling over into the federal s scene, uh, it's clearly uh, uh, this, is, this is a real issue that we need answers. I think the public needs answers, and uh, let's see where this ends up. Richo, they're not all innocent in this regard, but I would have thought the ALP has a rich history of branch stacking, don't they? It certainly does. I, mean, <laughs> I, I, uh, I was dealing with it when I was General Secretary, and I became General Secretary in, what, 76 or something. Um, uh, I, I dealt with several bouts of it, um, so it's, it's not uncommon. Um, that's the way you get into Parliament in this state. It's entirely rank-and-file pre-selection, and so if you, if you can get more of your friends and relatives into the branches, then you can get selected. So, of course, that's a pretty good incentive to get people to do it, and they do. Mm. John, I noticed the comments from Deputy Labor leader Yasmin Catley. She was fighting back this afternoon, saying, if you want to go down this path, meeting you blokes... Uh, we will use every tool at our disposal to drag at every spiv, every lurk merchant and criminal that hides under the slimy rock that is your party, referring to the Liberal Party, of course, but in the Coalition, how much blood are on the Coalition's hands? Well, I, I sort of sat in the, the chamber today a bit bemused because uh, as the National Party, as everyone knows, uh, there are no factions. We are a grassroots party, maybe a lot of egos, but no factions, and uh, this is foreign to us. It was actually quite amusing to watch... Uh, the, the uh, spears being thrown by both the Liberals and the Labor Party in the chamber. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the usual attack by Labor when you actually start pointing the finger, when you start actually highlighting their failures, their, their first form of uh, defence is attack and they, you know, they'll go on and attack uh, the Liberal Party. Uh, and, so, and, and that'll be the case. But the reality here now is, you know, regardless of what's happened in the past, this is something that's now fresh, something that the Leader of the Opposition commissioned a report for, so credit from that perspective, but then does nothing with it. This is actually mm. goes a long way to talking about what, what, who may be the alternate Premier of this state, and uh, it's about integrity, and today we, we saw none of that. Let's jump on to your submission to the New South Wales Bushfire and Inquiry, and I know Richo will have a few questions for you as well. We learned today that within your submission, your you're wanting landowners to have access to certain parts of national parks, no doubt the parts of the national park that border onto their property so that we can do more hazard reduction and save lives and property. It makes sense to me. 
Well, absolutely. You know, the worst neighbour you could have right now is the national parks or state forests or crown lands. Uh, governments do very little when it comes to, uh, you know, protecting landholders that are neighbours. And uh, if you have a look at some of the borders and the gaps or the... Uh, what we do to clear between, say, a national park and someone's private property. It's about a 20-metre uh, area, not enough to spin a uh, truck through, a, no. a fire truck. And clearly we saw those, those fire breaks were insufficient. We've got to give landholders the ability to manage and protect their homes. Uh, and, uh, and, and governments have to allow those neighbours to have access to that. If not, my other, you know, the, the, the way forward is, you know, you can't have agencies of a government like national parks or forestry or even the RFS managing on, at a, like in a silo approach. Maybe it's time for a new land management agency that oversees land management, mill tenure across all properties to make sure we protect life, property, assets, both public and private. And uh, if we haven't learned that from the last season's fires, well, then we'll never learn it and we can expect more of what we saw last summer. Richard? But, but isn't the main thing that you learn from the fires that every tree in the forest is, is going to be uh, a gum tree uh, and, and those eucalypts have got leaves that are all little explosions that are waiting to occur uh, as soon as you, as you get a fire? Why don't we replant forests with something else? Why don't we say to ourselves, the era of the eucalypt is causing us too much drama, let's try and change things? Uh, Richo, no, no opposition from me. I'm also the minister responsible for the timber industry in New South Wales and the argy bargy we're constantly having. Um, you know, there are so many that just want to see the end of the timber industry and will become a net import, importer of timber. Uh, that doesn't necess necessarily mean a great outcome for the environment, especially when you're importing timber from countries that have very little, uh, very little respect for, for their landscape. And, and that's true. I mean, there are certain types and species of trees that are more flammable than others and... Uh, and maybe we've got to address that and th th there is an opportunity here. But at the same time, it's the fuel load on the forest floor. There's one part that is, uh, you know, we all accept now uh, with climate change, we may, we may be getting uh, longer, drier spells. Uh, we can't stop the ignition, which often is lightning. But the one thing we have complete control over is fuel loads. And if you minimise the fuel loads, you minimise the impact of these fires. And what we saw on on, on, during the summer was the worst fires this state has ever seen. And this is not coming just from politicians. You know, I've travelled the state and the message from north to south is exactly the same. RFS volunteers who have been on the ground for decades, uh, who have been, uh, you know, get awarded medals for their bravery and their volunteering in the RFS, the largest volunteer organisation in the world. Uh, they're the other ones who are saying that we've done very little when it comes to managing the fuel loads on the forest floor because we've been caught up in green ideology. Mm. We don't actually respect private property or even government assets. And somehow we think if you lock it up, that's the best thing we can do for the environment. Well, five and a half million hectares later, a billion uh, uh, species or animals, wildlife destroyed is not a great environmental outcome. No, and as you've suggested in that submission you've made to the inquiry, we should be putting cattle back into the national parks as well. But we could talk about that forever. How's this 14-way battle going on for the suit of Eden Monero? Well, <laughs> it's, a, it's a big race. I'm sort of almost... Happy I didn't throw my hat in the ring. Uh, it's, it's, it's a big race, and by-elections do that, and uh, the whole focus of the nation is on Eden Monero, and, uh, you know, I, I genuinely think it's going to be a tough race for everybody. Um, Eden Monero being the bellwether seat predominantly uh, has always been a bellwether seat until uh, Peter Hendy lost to Mike Kelly, but in, in context, Peter Hendy was the worst Liberal member anyone will ever see as a local member, and that's why Mike Kelly won it off him and held and twice held it in opposition against the trend. And Mike's a decent guy and a good local member, someone who I've worked with closely. Um, but, you know, this race is going to be tough for, for both. I mean, what's playing out in Victoria with brand stacking can't help Albanese, but at the same time, um, winning this seat against... Uh, you, know, uh, you know, winning from government is difficult. It hasn't happened in 100 years. And we are the bill with the seat. And the reason that is the case, uh, the constituents down there, the voters, are very informed voters and they will judge each candidate. And, and the truth here, you've got Fiona Cotsvoy, the Liberal candidate, who just lost last time. But in her loss, I thought she was very... She wasn't humble. Uh, she had a swipe at Mike Kelly about his moustache in, in, in a Facebook post, which I actually had a go defending... Mike, which I think was, you know, it's, it's the measure of the individual. Then you've got Trevor Hicks, my candidate, uh, the National Party candidate from just outside of Queen and Captain's Flat, an engineer, mechanic, you know, plain speaking, and I think he'll give it a shake. And then you've got uh, the Labor candidate in Christy McBain, uh, the mayor, the former mayor of Bega, who, who I've dealt with and worked with, and 
uh, Christy actually stood up tall uh, during the fires and the season's fires. So uh, a very tough race for, for the voters, but uh, tough race uh, that'll come down to preferences. So those 14 candidates in the field uh, could determine who ends up as the candidate. But, you know, at this stage, you know, I think the, the, the true underdog is are the Nats. Uh, we polled 6% last time. I'm hoping we'll get into double-digit figures, but... We could, be, we could end up being the kingmaker where our preferences go. Yeah, true. Uh, one final one for John Barillaro, Richard. No, not Richard. true. Excuse me. Not true. Not true. Um, uh, McBain will win that and win it comfortably. Even, without, even with his branch stacking scandal going on? Oh, mate, I don't think that affects too many people. That, that's come and gone. I can remember plenty of it in my time. It just keeps, you know, every now and again you get a scandal. Um, but a scandal of Victorian branches no one cares too much about. Uh, it's got not, not three tenths of five eighths of you know what to do with um, uh, this this campaign. So now I'm not worried about that. Um, and McBain will win it and win it well.